the warmest of greetings to you. Who are you? I am your storyteller, Chip. And you know, about 350 years ago, a man called Sir Thomas Bloodworth got his dream job. Lord Mayor of London. That made him almost as powerful as the king. And Sir Thomas soon learned that with great power comes great frustration. First, there were lots of people in London who had the plague. They were really sick and they all thought Sir Thomas should do something about it. Second, the king wanted to get rid of all of the old wooden buildings in London and build stone buildings instead. But none of the people in the wooden homes wanted to get out of the way so Sir Thomas could do his job. And third, you needed an umbrella in London, even in summer because people kept throwing their toilet water out the window. Ugh. And when they demanded that Sir Thomas do something about that, Sir Thomas moaned, great, that's just great. What can I do about it all? <laughs> you see, Sir Thomas couldn't do anything about the plague, could he? What could he possibly do? OK, maybe he could bring some more doctors into London, but that cost a lot of money. He didn't have a never-ending pot of money. And when the king wanted to knock down all of those wooden buildings and put stone ones up instead, everyone living in the wooden buildings, they said to Sir Thomas, if you want me to move, then you have to give me some money. And Sir Thomas didn't have a super never-ending pot of money, did he? Yeah. And yes, it was really smelly living in London 350 years ago because people would throw their toilet water out of the window. What could Sir Thomas do about that? Maybe he could have built some drains or maybe he could have uh, made some sort of sewer to get rid of all of the water, but those things cost money. And Sir Thomas did not have a never-ending pot of money. So when all of these problems came to him, Sir Thomas would usually moan, Great! This is great! What could I do about it all? But right at the start of this story, Sir Thomas didn't have to worry about any of those things. And do you know why? Because he was fast asleep. He was enjoying a blissful, peaceful night until about three o'clock in the morning when he heard a very loud knock at the door. Do you think you can make the loud knocking sound at the door? It was so loud it woke Sir Thomas up and he got very annoyed being woken up before the sun had even come up over the horizon and he went down to open his door and say, what is it? And there at the door were two night watchmen, people who stayed up at night to make sure that everything was okay in the streets of London. And they said, excuse us, sir, sorry, sir, but there's a fire that started in Pudding Lane. A fire? A fire? Sir Thomas moaned. What did he moan? Great. It's just great. Just like that. What can I do about it all? If it's on fire, you should be getting the firemen. Ah. But the night watchman said, really, sir, it's getting to be quite a big fire. We think you should come and look at it so you can tell us what to do. Well, Sir Thomas went and got his dressing gown on and he was a little bit annoyed, so he didn't rush. He took his time getting his slippers on and going down. I mean, it was their fault, wasn't it, for coming and disturbing him while he was having a really nice sleep. And he followed the night watchman to Pudding Lane. And when he got there, he saw several houses were already on fire. Those wooden houses that the king had wanted to knock down, they were now burning. 
one of them was the, where the baker lived and, and all of his family were, were outside the house and they all looked really worried because apparently it was their maid who had accidentally started this fire and she was still trapped in the house. But as the fire burned those buildings, Sir Thomas looked at it and thought, it's just a little fire. There's a little bit of fire. A woman could spit on that fire and put it out. I spent lots of money getting some buckets for you people to go and fill them up with water and throw them on fires like this one. And there's a really big river nearby that you can get water from. The big river in London is called the Thames. So take your buckets, fill them up in the Thames, come back and put out this fire and let me get my sleep. And with that, Sir Thomas turned around, went all the way back home, got back into bed and went back off to his blissful rest. It was lovely and peaceful there and because he'd been woken up in the middle of the night he slept a little bit longer than usual. Oh, when he finally woke up and saw the sun coming in through the windows he thought it was a bit unusual that no one had woken him up yet. Where had all his servants gone? Where was the servant who usually brought him his tea and his breakfast? He went and he went over to the door and he, he called out around his house. Hello? Anybody there? Where is everybody? And it was a long time before someone came running up the stairs. One of his maid servants coming up and saying, It's me, sir. I'm here, sir. Sorry, sir. And Sir Thomas demanded to know where everybody was. And the maid said, oh, they're, sorry, sir, but they're all probably out to look at the fire, sir. The fire, said Sir Thomas. The fire, that tiny little fire from last night. Haven't they put it out already? But the maid said, sorry, sir, but it's not a little fire, sir. Not a little fire at all. It's already burned down so many houses and, and they say it's spreading over London Bridge to the other side of the river. Well, that didn't sound like a little fire, did it? Yeah. It sounded like a big fire. Yeah. So Sir Thomas thought he'd better go and take another look. But he was very annoyed that no one had come to fetch him already. So he didn't rush. It was their own fault for not coming to get him. He decided to take his time getting his finest suit on. He needed to look good, didn't he? I mean, he was Lord Mayor. He needed to look good for everybody else when they saw him. So he didn't just put on his finest suit, but he also put on his finest hat. And he asked the maid to cook him up a really big hearty breakfast. So he had lots of energy to deal with the day ahead. And then together with his maid, Sir Thomas left the house and set off in the direction of the fire. But he couldn't get very close because as they started walking towards the fire, even the ground, even the roads were really burning hot. They couldn't walk along them. So Sir Thomas and the maid had to head down in the direction of the river. And they saw lots of other people who were doing that as well. Lots of other people running to get to the river, carrying their most precious possessions from their houses to rescue them. Things like their, their chests full of jewelry, things like their, their cages with their pets in. They were all going down to the river to get on some boats. Well, Sir Thomas wanted to get onto one of those boats as well so he could get a good look at this fire. And when he got down there, one of the boatmen with his big boat and his big stick for pushing the boat along looked up at Sir Thomas and said, that'll be five shillings, please. Five shillings, said Sir Thomas. Five? He usually only costs one shilling. Why do you want five? The ferryman said, 
I'm sorry, sir, but as you can see, there are lots of people here wanting to get on these boats. If you won't come on, somebody else will. And when he said that, Sir Thomas moaned. Well, what did he moan? Great! This is great! What can I do about it all? I guess I'd better give five shillings so that we can get on this boat. That is exactly what he did. And after they went out to the river, Sir Thomas could see just how huge this fire was. It really had burned its way along London Bridge. And there were now houses in pretty much every side that Sir Thomas could see that had sparks flying out from them. Sir Thomas could see pigeons flying across the sky and even they couldn't get high enough. They were getting singed by the fire and falling down out of the sky. But when Sir Thomas saw that, he could also tell which way the wind was going. And when he saw that the wind was taking the fire towards some of the most important buildings in London, like the Tower of London, you might have heard of that one, and, and St Paul's Cathedral, you might have heard of that one too. The fire was heading towards the very heart of London. Sir Thomas knew he had to do something fast. So he got the ferryman to take the boat over in that direction of London. And as soon as he alighted off from the boat and onto the banks, he was met by the fireman who said, oh, thank goodness you are here, Lord Mayor. It's really, really important that we knock these houses down. If we knock these houses down, we can stop the fire getting across. We can stop the fire from carrying across to the rest of London. But when the fireman asked Sir Thomas to knock those houses down, Sir Thomas moaned. What did he moan? Great! That's just great! What can I do about it all? I can't knock down houses unless I have the permission of the king. I need to have an edict from the king. I can't just go knocking houses down. And besides, the people who live there, they will want me to pay them lots of money and I don't have a never-ending pot of money, do I? Well, the fireman <laughs> couldn't knock down the houses without Sir Thomas' permission. And that meant that they had to just, just go and use those buckets and get the water from the river and throw the water on the fire. But there was no way those buckets <laughs> could carry enough water to put out the huge towering flames that were now burning through London. You can make those towering flames if you like with your hands. See how big they are getting and how big they are waving around. Look at how easily they are spreading around the room right now. And Sir Thomas watched as they hit those houses that the firemen had wanted to pull down. And they went over those houses. They burned through those houses and they started burning houses even beyond them all the way down to the Tower of London and St Paul's Cathedral. By now, Sir Thomas could see so much of London going up in smoke, he began to worry about how many people were going to be asking him for money to build their houses back again. And he realised that maybe he actually should have listened to the firemen and started just, just knocking down houses. But, but by now he was calling out and, and no one was listening to him. They were really busy running to fetch water or, or more likely running to take their favourite things away from their houses down to the river to get as far away from the flames as they could. And the heat was so unbearable that in the end Sir Thomas began to feel dizzy and then he began to feel unsteady. And then he began to faint, but he was caught in the arms of one of the king's men. Sir Thomas looked around and recognized him. His name was Samuel Pepys. You might have heard of Samuel Pepys. Samuel Pepys held on to Sir Thomas to stop him from falling and said, Lord Mayor, I have here an edict from the king 
This is your permission to start knocking down houses to save the rest of London from this huge fire. But Sir Thomas moaned. Great! That's just great! What can I do about it all? This edict is too late. It's far too late. No one's listening to me now. All of the firemen have gone. They've all run off. I can't do anything. I can't save London. And it was true. The fire burned so much that it looked like daytime even after the sun had gone down. And it did that for another three nights. At last, the people of London did manage to get the fire under control and it did burn down and go away. But not before it had taken some of those important buildings, including St. Paul's Cathedral. And now, Sir Thomas Bloodworth found himself having to spend an awful lot of money building London back again. The St Paul's Cathedral that you can go and see today, the bridges that you can see today, and a lot of the houses that were now made of stone. And it's really weird, isn't it, what Sir Thomas used to moan? What did Sir Thomas moan? Great! This is great! Usually we think of great as being a word that means something good. But do you think that's what Sir Thomas was using it for? Thank you so much for sharing that story with me. You know, that was a true story. And I wonder how you would have dealt with that great big fire if you'd been there. I reckon you would have been more like the hero of my bonus story, which is about another big fire from history. And if you are an epic explorer, you can enjoy that story by looking down this story's page on our website. But if you're not an epic explorer yet, head to fablespodcast.co.uk to find out how to become one. And while you're there, why not have a go at our epic challenge? If you send some of your creativity to us, then we may very well be sending some right back just for you. Right now, though, it only remains for me to say cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon.